All right, let's break this down further. How will the new Pope be chosen? I want to bring in Father Terry Donahue. He is the Director of Lay Formation for the Companions of the Cross in Ottawa. Good morning to you, Father. Good morning, great to be here. Thank you, thanks for joining us here on Canada Live. Look, uh, you may uh, be shocked as well to learn of this news. It's been dominating world headlines uh, for two days straight now. First of all, I wanna get your reaction to the uh, resignation news, sir. Well, I'm, I'm sad to hear it in one sense because he's, he's a spiritual father to me and to uh, over a billion Catholics, and we really respect him and what he's done as Pope. So on the other hand, I think he's made a good decision in terms of uh, his discernment. In fact, uh, in 2009, he, he visited the tomb of Pope Celestine V, and it turns out that he was the Pope who made the decision to allow uh, Popes to resign. And so oh, very he was kind of almost signaling, he left his pallium, a representation of his uh, authority as Bishop of Rome, on the tomb itself. And most people didn't, weren't aware of the significance of that, but now, a few years later, I think it was almost hinting that he saw this person as a model. And it turns out Pope Celestine V actually did resign his office. You know, there are all sorts of reports uh, flying in the wake of uh, Benedict XVI's resignation, and I even read that uh, he had told the Vatican uh, last year that he intended to uh, step down. But of course, uh, maybe it could be that old case of saying you're going to do it, but doing it actually are, are two different things. Uh, it was all about the health, wasn't it? His poor health? Yeah, just lacking the strength yeah. to uh, adequately... Uh, serve as the Pope. It's, a, it's not a figurehead role. It's an incredibly demanding position uh, with great deci momentous decisions being made literally every day that, that affect the whole, the whole world. Well, speaking of that now, as uh, the Vatican gets set to choose uh, his successor, uh, tell us a little bit about the process that is entailed here. We're all becoming uh, Catholic specialists uh, <laughs> uh, in light of this resignation, but you, of course, are the, uh, one of the ultimate specialists here. Can you break this down for us, Father? Sure, it's a process of prayer and discernment that involves the entire church to begin with, uh, to pray for the cardinals who are, uh, the cardinal electors are the ones who actually make the decision. So all the cardinals will come together to the Vatican, probably around maybe March 10th, March 15th, something like that, and they will uh, hear some sermons that describe the state of the church, uh, what the needs are to help in the discernment of who would be the best candidate, uh, what qualities they would have. But then they are uh, kind of locked in. They're, the conclave means with the key, <laughs> which means that they're locked in, in some sense, to uh, the Sistine oh, wow. Chapel, but also they have residences and so on. But everyone else is kicked out uh, who is not a cardinal elector. So there will be 117, all uh, cardinals who are under the age of 80 when the Holy See becomes vacant. They will engage in a process of prayer and discussion followed by votes. It'll be a first vote, uh, will be on the first day, uh, followed by four votes the successive day. And you need a two-thirds majority of these votes in order to be chosen as Pope, to be elected Pope. So that's a very high standard. And so over the process, you get this communal kind of discernment of what is God saying to the individual cardinals, each of their individual discernments of God's mm -hmm. will, what would be best for the church. But then it's all brought together and you get a consensus that forms. It's a consensus building process of discernment. Father, I don't want to uh, offend you, but uh, folks are taking bets on this, on who's going to be Well, yeah, uh, the there's next, also uh, that Pope. side. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm not going to obviously ask you about that aspect of it, but uh, let me ask you this. Uh, Faith Goldie was just on earlier, uh, one of our specials here at The Sun, insofar as Catholicism is concerned. Uh, a Canadian, Mark Ouellette, getting some uh, attention. Uh, who do you see as an odds-on favorite uh, for, for taking over for Benedict the Sixteenth? Well, based on what I've been reading, I agree that Cardinal Ouellette is an excellent candidate uh, because of his, especially, I think, his understanding of the church universal. He has worked as a missionary and in other capacities in the church in Latin America while being from uh, North America. And he has a European understanding and sensibility as well with his French background, um, uh, French-Canadian background. And he... Uh, really can represent uh, the universal church, speaking six languages, having uh, great experience. He's very well respected among cardinals in the entire world. 
and he's been working as a prefect of the Congregation for Bishops, which is one of the highest positions in the Vatican currently. So certainly in the past seven years yeah. since his, you know, the 2005 conclave, he's had a growing influence on the, the world stage. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, certainly uh, back in the spotlight, the Vatican, and I'm sure the next uh, few months will be quite critical as they uh, get down to business. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate the, uh, the education that you provided us. You're welcome. All Great right. to be here. Thank you. That's Father Terry Donahue, Director of Life Formation for the Companions of the Cross in Ottawa.